Uh, hey guys, this is Guab, and today we will be doing a definitive pre-release Dom 6 EA tier list. Uh, and this is actually also going to be the final Dominion 6 EA tier list because it is perfect, and if you disagree, you are wrong. Uh, no, obviously this is done in jest. Uh, I have not played the beta, so this is based just purely off the information we know. Uh, we know. Um, here's some general changes for those who don't know. Um, in general, scales builds will be doing better because gold is up. Mages um, and infrastructure have both been made more expensive to counteract that. Um, it is harder to throw scales um, because scales can't go down as far and temperature can't be dumped as freely. Um, so hell blesses are down, scales up, um, light cavalry down, thugs in general down and heavy cavalry is in general up um so this is just the general changes and now we'll be going over uh all the nations so first off we actually have abyssia and we're going to go ahead and put it in the s tier and in dominions 5 it was in the b tier so uh, abyssia actually benefits from a lot of the changes um growth and death have actually been nerfed so that they don't impact your uh income as much and so uh, abyssia having half the half the impact makes it so that they can actually take death for even cheaper than they would previously um, also their two bonus fire points have now been converted to two bonus free bless points so both those things combined make it so that they can still run hell blesses when a lot of other people are no longer able to and also their blesses get uh, bless has gained a ton of flexibility by being able to do that um, fire Ellie's and flaming arrows have both been nerfed, but there are a lot of new interesting fire spells being added like a fire swarm attack that summons salamanders and then there's also a fire attack booster so potentially Abyssia has uh, avenues open for repel thugs. Um, in a world where hell blesses have become harder to run or non-existent, Abyssians have become easier and better. Now they can run stuff like regenerating, uh, regeneration, bark skin, and blood bond while taking better pretender paths. Uh, I predict Abyssia will be a surprise big winner. Something I didn't have written down is they also have um, Dark Vision and with the cave layer added, that is gonna become increasingly relevant. Um, so yeah, their crazy good sacreds are gonna be even better. And yeah, I, I think they'll just absolutely run. Then we will go with a Gartha and we'll be putting them in the A tier. Um, they're in a pretty unique position. Oh, and in Dominions 5, they were C. Um, Agartha is also in a pretty unique situation. Um, all other giant nations are nerfed by either becoming two bless points or three bless points. Um, but Agarthans are still one bless point. So they're actually going to be having not only the recruit only uh, recruit anywhere giants, but they're the only ones who are going to actually still be able to produce their giants in number. Also, they're going to be starting in the cave layer, so it's going to be way easier for them to recruit their Recruit Anywhere um, uh, Olms. And yeah, they're just such a big winner. They do so great in caves. They're already looking for caves, and everyone's going to be having less sacreds proportionally and more scales troops. But Agartha is going to say, fuck that, and uh, just absolutely run it. Um, in addition to all those things combined, um, it is... Uh, I can do the numbers, um, which I, I will go over in another video for pretender ideas, but it's actually a little bit easier to just take a bunch of attack skill um, than it was previously and still have good pretender paths. Um, so like, you know, I see Repel Bless or Sight Vengeance Blesses becoming a really good line for Agartha to run. Okay, um, now we have Arco. Um, I don't know, I was looking for their flag everywhere. In Dominions 5, Arco was S tier. They just had unprecedented levels of strategic mobility as well as great sacreds and great mages. Um, unfortunately, air magic is made worse um, with the heavy nerfing of air Ellie's and also the likely nerfing of Thunderbolt. It's decreased accuracy, um, greater AoE. Um, and the Wind Riders are kind of way worse um just light cavalry is super easy to kill because now you can hit the mounts um since their light cavalry is flight that's slightly mitigated because you're not going to be hitting with as much uh going to be hit with as much uh ranged attacks um but still light cavalry 
Um, still going to get absolutely run over. Um, their Mystics are still absolutely amazing. They have great... Uh, they have mid-scales troops, um, and they do have chariots. So uh, with the horse changes, those chariots might be really interesting. I, I We have not really gotten too much information about how good chariots are. Um, but, I mean, basically the biggest nerf is... You know their sacreds are just going to be less effective and air magic is also going to be less effective so that brings them from the s tier down to the a uh c um atlantis uh and in dominions 5 atlantis was also c tier uh, atlantis it's a bit easier to invade underwater um they've buffed all the uh underwater uh, you know bringing troops underwater items and they've also reduced the penalty for um being a poor amphibian um but abyssia uh, sorry atlantis oh my gosh does have dark vision for the cave lair um and there is going to be underwater caves um and or flooded caves as they say uh, and they also have built-in re elemental resistances and magic weapons they're still ultimately okay they have passable scale troops and good sacreds um Magic weapons are going to be less common, same with elemental resistances, so those are going to be pretty valuable, but nothing in the changes um, is enough to bring them up or down a tier, um, especially with underwater being easier to invade. Um, Baratos. Um, so Baratos in Dominions 5 was a C, and I had a hard time deciding between putting Baratos in B or C tier, and I actually ended up leaning on C. And so the reason is, is Bertos actually has decent uh, to very good scale troops, and they still have national blood, which um, non-national blood has been nerfed, but national blood hasn't been touched. And since the, due to increased population, uh, national blood's going to be really, really good, um, from my personal opinion. Uh, they also have interesting medium cavalry, uh, and they have elephants to boot, and uh, so... Like, they're going to have a lot more interesting options. They also have their Sacred Blood Summons. Um, so, like, they're going to be able to do a lot. Very interesting. But their good scales troop doesn't make up for their poor, uh, poor mage lineup or heavy costs. Um, and people are still probably going to rush Baratos down because they're a rush target. So that squarely lands them in the C tier. So, next we have Kalem. Kalem in Dominions 5 was squarely in the S, mostly for their strategic mobility and also um, just being able to drop air alleys or a bunch of different other spells whenever they need it. Um, they just have so much mobility, uh, even though that they were mostly a Scales Nation. And since they were a Scales Nation, you would think that I would say that that would make them S since Scales Troops are, are up and stuff, but I'm actually going to go ahead and put Kalem in the A tier. And that's just because mostly air magic is a bit worse. Um, their mammoths are definitely going to be interesting um, in Dom 6. But, I mean, they're bread and butter. Thunderbolts, lightning bolts, you know. And uh, air ellies are all nerfed. You know, we hear we're going to get a, you know, lower AoE for, like, um, an AoE option for, like, Mistform and stuff like that. Uh, remains to be seen how good those are. In my estimation, air magic is a bit nerfed, and as that's Kalem's bread and butter, we're going to go ahead and move him into the A tier. Next, we have Satis. And actually, I'm going to go ahead and put Satis at the top of the C tier. Um, there we go. And so, Satis in Dom 5 was C. Um, they just were kind of a one trick pony, and they just didn't have enough to any like really bring them home but in dom 6 uh poison is now buffed and if units are poisoned their stats are debuffed and so this leads to satis having some new interesting options with their sacreds the serpent dancers i believe they're called anyway they're really high defense sacreds that apply poison on hit uh, and honestly i can see stacking defense on them um, and getting to like you know something ridiculous like 25 you know, or 23 plus unsurroundable two. And so then you just like let your sacreds whittle down uh, with poison or, you know, just massing your pretty good s uh, scales troops um, of slave warriors. But with battlefield enchantments getting nerfed and coming in later, Satis is probably still safe in the C tier. Now we have Ermor. 
Where did I put Ermer's flag? No. Oh, there we go. Okay. Uh, next we have her, uh, Ermor. And Ermor was A tier in Dominions 5. And in Dom 6, I have them in the S tier. They have great scales troops and the ba best sacred heavy cav in a world where it got even better. With improvements to fire, all this makes for an excellent, if boring, package. So, woo! Way to go, Ermor. Um, Fomoria. Fomoria, uh, they still have Wailing Wind access when it's a lot harder for most people. And they still have Heavy Thugs. And they also have actually really good Scales troops. And they're a nation that just has a really big toolbox. In Dominions 5, they were S tier. And in Dominion 6, I'm going to say that they're still safe in this S tier. A lot of people don't think Fomoria is busted. And they're not busted. Uh, but they just have so many tools, and I'm sure that even with all the changes, they can find stuff that still works for them. Next, we have Helheim. Helheim in Dom 5 was A tier. I'm actually going to go ahead and boost them down. Uh, that doesn't really make sense, but that's what I'm doing them. Uh, down to the B tier. Um, they have decent but expensive scales troops, and they lose Wailing Wind a uh, and uh, Access and Clouds for Trapezing Thugs. Not to mention... Their sacreds suffer very similarly to other light cavalry, and can they can no longer stack defense in the same way, which was uh, pretty ubiquitous for uh, elf cavalry. Uh, elf cavalry. There we go. I had a hard time saying cavalry there. Um, I do know that they have glamour on some of their mages, and uh, you know, like some of them are, are getting made more expensive, so they might not have a hundred percent lost. Um, they may not have 100% lost Wailing Winds, but I just, I, I don't see a world where, you know, they can no longer rely on their Sacreds and they can't thug as effectively that they're still in the A tier. But, you know, weirder things have happened. Uh, Hinnom in uh, Dominions 5, they were B tier, and I'm actually going to go ahead and put them in C. Um, if we're, we'll, we'll order them at the end if, if we actually want to. Um... They can no longer cross communion between blood and astral, which will be a massive nerf. Um, they recruit half as many giants uh, due to the way bless points have have uh, changed, and their blesses are in general going to be weaker. The only saving grace is that in a world of less resists and magic weapons, they have easy access to both of these things, and their light super combatants are still a menace. You could say heavy thug, most people would. Um, in addition, they have troops with dark vision, which might be fun for the cave layer. And some of their scales troops are not bad at all. I, I like some of the cavemen and other stuff like that. Um, still, I think that they're a big loser. General blood nerfed, a, a lot of other issues. And so, going to go ahead and put them down in the C tier. Now, this might be one of my most controversial opinions. So, Kalasa, Kalisa. I don't know. I'm sorry. Uh, they were C tier in Dominions 5 and in Dom 6. I'm actually going to put them in the D tier. Um, you might think that they got better since they have Recruit Anywhere Sacreds and there's more money around. So proportionally, they'll have more Sacreds out. But they have terrible scale troops and the nat natural protection spells are nerfed if you don't have much natural protection. Uh, and there's also worse blesses. Uh, yeah, I legitimately think that they will be one of the worst nations. Um, and the only hope for them is that there's new animal spells um will are gonna save them or that the buff to archers so that instead of adding a third of the strength they add half the strength will really help them because they have high strength archers so you know maybe uh, and you know battlefields are bigger so like maybe you rush mass bandar archers like i you know i really i really don't know um and I have, yeah, I just, I just, I don't know. I don't know what you're going to do. Um, so, yeah, I think they're, I think they're pretty safely in the D tier. Uh, next, we have Lonka, who was uh, an A in Dominions 5, and they're still an A. Um, so, there are some nerfs to the Anti-Demon and Undone spells, as well as buffs to animals, potentially. I believe that there are. And so, there's a huge potential upside. Um, oh, sorry. Uh, buffs to animals. Yes. Um, sorry. Uh, so so the, they, they gain a lot with both of those things. But with blessed nerfs and numbers changes for uh, blood, I'm left rather feeling lukewarm on them. Um, if there's 
you know, good animal stuff that we haven't seen or some other stuff, you know, they will, you know, could move up or down, but, you know, I'm left feeling rather lukewarm about them and they're safely in the A tier. Um, so Machaka, Machaka in Dom 5 was B and in Dom 6, I'm actually going to go ahead and put them in the A tier. So I'm not going to lie. I am actually betting all my chips on them getting the ability to make animals disciplined. And I really, really hope that they can. Um, we have heard that the trait uh, is going to be added into the game. And we don't know all who's going to get it. But we know that e EA Pyrene, I believe, is going to get it. And it just makes sense for Machaka to get it too. Um, but if they don't get it, their elephant will be sick with multiple riders. And they can now give their decent scales troops more attack. So they can repel better, you know, through, you know, uh, fire, uh, fire spells. Um, so overall, I'm quite helpful on them. And, you know, they get discount to Lion's Pelts, and there's, you know, so they'll get more invulnerability thrown around, and there'll be less magic weapons, you know, like, uh, this is a rather hopeful take, but I feel, I feel somewhat safe in making it. Um, oh man, I have these in the wrong order. Um, anyway, uh, Marvernia. So, Marvernia was C tier, and I argued with myself between putting it in C and B uh, for quite a while. But I still think that they are in the C tier. And so they have decent scales troops and also ways to mass sacred troops, which is going to be amazing, you know, in a world where they're more rare. But it does take gems, so, you know, eh, toss up. And in addition to less magic weapons, um, which makes their invulnerability better, uh, one more comment to make is with armor now giving HP, you know, they could potentially make small turbo communions. So, like, do like four and four or something like that um you know they so you know ah could be good could be bad you know like that there's a lot of small changes that affect them minorly but like nothing nothing major um did i skip macone okay no yeah so okay macone um uh, macone in dom 5 they were c and i'm actually gonna put them in the b tier um they are one of the top three nations in EA for scales troops, and they have forma uh, formation fighter, eight cost slaves with decent prot. So they are trucking. Um, as well as they still have viable heavy thugs that are recruitable. In addition to buffs to fire magic, it should be enough to bring one of my favorite nations into the decent tier list. Um, though with earth magic nerfs, it still might not be enough for them. But, you know, scales are better. They still have heavy thugs. You know, they can repel thug potentially really well. So, ah, I think B tier. Though magic diversity and everything else is still an issue for them. Uh, Michelin, not much, too much to say. Micklin, um, they were an S. They're still an S. Blesses are a little bit weaker. Going to be a little bit harder to hell bless. But blesses are more flexible. So, you know, they still have national blood. They still have Recruit Anywhere Sacreds. There's buffs to Slingers, and they have Shielded Slingers. Uh, and they have their Amazing Mages. They're going to roll. I think something that's really funny that uh, maybe I'll try is just going Mass Slingers uh, and with Flaming Arrows, since they now do more damage. Uh, but I'm pretty sure it'll be bad. <laughs> but, yeah, you know, the Great Nation can't complain. Uh, next up, we have Niflheim. Niflheim was B tier. It's still B tier. Uh, they get less giants. They have worse blesses, and they can no longer cross communion. But they still have their turbo communions, and they still have their super combatant giants. They're gonna be fine, if a little bit worse. Um. Oh, Oceana. Okay, I love Oceana. They were C tier in Dom Five. And I'm actually going to move them to the B tier. So I'm going to caveat this by saying I love Oceana, so I might be a bit biased. But they have great scales troops, and their light cavalry will remain quite good. However, they received some buffs that I think take them to the next tier, and one of them is the poison changes. Their sacreds have poisonous barbs 5. And before the changes, it was something that was just kind of nice, but... Due to poison now applying stat debuffs, if you can make your units sufficiently tanky, they can whittle down opposing units quite well. Though this only works versus troops with length 1 or 0 weapons. For example, if they're facing a human, every time the human hits, they'll lose to attack and defense. And that's pretty hot to me. Also, their sirens, which were a terrible unit, 
on land, being an air one, water one mage, have lost their air to gain glamour, which is shaping up to be an amazing path. Water is also being buffed, which will help them out. They have added the uh, the spell Gooey Water. I wish I was joking. Um, <laughs> the last change is a meta one, with underwater being easier to invade. There should be less water nations running around, so they can avoid their bad underwater matchups, which, in my opinion, either they or Therados were the worst underwater. Uh, in fighting, you know, other underwaters. So well, that will be really great for them. Okay, next we have Pan. And they were A tier, and they're still A tier. Some people might say that they're S. You know, they have a lot of great tools, dryads, everything else. Big nature, big earth, um, and some blood. Um, so Pangea. The only cavalry that can still repug or repel Thug, woot, besides Oceana... Uh, their non-centaur scale troops are trash, and they lose easy foul, va uh, foul vapors access, and assassins and assassinations and seductions are nerfed. But all this said, they still have a lot of tools, and they I'm confident they can get stuff working. Um, and you know, I'll just say assassinations and seductions did need a nerf. Probably still good. They have a lot of tools. Well, they don't have that many tools, but their tools are, are going to be still good. You know, they have a lot of different avenues of attack. Um, they still have their super combatants and everything else. They're they're going to be fine. Pelagia. D tier. Pelagia, sadly, our fish boys still suck. Their scales troops are good. And water ellies are a little bit worse. So there's hope, but not really. They're in D tier and remain in D for a reason. Relay. Woo! I love Relay. Relay. Well, okay. I say I love, love Relay, but I love the concept of Relay. I've never played as or against EA Relay, so I have no right to speak. I'll just say blub, 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 C tier. Uh, just kidding. The changes are probably a net improvement for them, as they presumably rely on hordes of chaff plus mind blasters. So they'll be fine, but just not good. And they still have problems for, of getting out of the water. So yeah, they're still C. Okay, um, now we're on to Russ. Russ, 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 Russ. They were C tier. They're still C tier. I love you. Sadly, Russ does not love me back. People have said Russ is an MA nation in EA with their expensive troops and mages, but if you ask me, everything is just overcosted. With the air magic nerf and lack of buffs, they still deserve the C tier, maybe lower. Though, who knows, with the new blesses, they can make something work. You know, I could see there's now bigger uh, new AoE misform spells, and, you know, they could run some interesting blesses, so maybe there's hope for them, but I just don't see it. Sorrow, one of the nations I'm most excited to talk about. They were S tier, and they're still S -t No, they were A tier, and they're still S tier. Why did I have this marked wrong? Anyway, they're a great nation, have great mages, and now their scales heavy cavalry are going to be even better. In addition, cavalry archers can now fire and keep distance. This will probably be pretty useless, but hey, it's there. And you know, if you just want to harass people down, that'll be great. And maybe into like Jags or something, or Ozolotls, maybe that would be. No, because then they'll just fly. I don't know. Uh, there, there must be scenarios where fire and keep distance is good. But anyway, it's an amazing nation. Probably got even better. Keep on the lookout. One thing I will say is, when I was talking about this originally, someone pointed out that the tattoos probably do not apply to the horses, which tattoos give in vulnerability. And that is fair. That is fair. The horses will still have barding, though, because they're heavy cavalry and, you know, less magic weapons running around. So, you know, their invulnerability is even better. I just don't see a way that Sorrow is not S tier now. Yeah, I feel very strongly about this. Uh, anyway, Therados, they were A tier. They are still A tier. Uh, there's a number of changes affecting them. Less magic weapons, worse anti-undead spells. But Moss Body, Foul Vapors, and Blesses are worse, in addition to them having less free spawn compared to Scales Nations. Altogether, probably still A tier. There's some interesting things that I'm the I theorize with them. Like, they could run the Lifesteal Bless and then run around with their Melias run using Quickness, Moss Body... Um, you know, like, they could do some interesting thug options, but, yeah, I mean, they were good, they're probably still good, you know, what's to complain about? Uh, Tianchi. Uh, Tianchi, so many of the changes are positive of them, they were C tier, they are C tier, uh, horse archers can now fire and keep distance, they have great scales, troops, 
and interesting chariot options. Resists are harder to come by, so their sacreds, which have all the resists, are probably provide more value. However, their fundamental issues still remains. Their mages are just really hard to use effectively, and you have to pay for so much more than you need. Uh, you know, if you're just using the water nature cross path, you still have to pay for, you know, like fire, air, and, and everything else on them. Like, I, they're just, they just lack an effective mage core in my opinion. Or their troops need to be, their troops or sacreds need to be better to make up for it. Uh, anyway, TNN. TNN, they were S tier. They were the utility knife of the already utility knife elf nations. Um... Sadly, I'm going to be putting them in B tier, which is a two tier drop. Um, and I, I was debating between B and A, but they hurt a lot. Their light thugs are going to lose their magic phase movement, and they can no longer really be able to defense stack as well. And they also can't repel, uh, they can't attack stack to repel thug anymore. And you know they have great but expensive scale troops you know they're probably still good they're probably still playable they just lose a lot of what made them really good not to mention yeah like i mean they're Saheeds or however you say it you know they're still gonna have seduction and like they're still gonna have you know some other good stuff but like even those people you know air elementals are are gonna be no longer anything something to write home about so it's just they lose on so many paths. Um, kind of sucks for them, but I think it's good for the state of the game. I'm playing against a TNG right now. Uh, sorry, not a TNG. A TNN right now, and I'm getting my butt kicked. So, you know, good riddance. <laughs> um, okay. Ubar. Uh, they were C. They're still C. Ubar, Ubar, Ubar. God, uh, how I hate Ubar. Uh, more people are going to be taking dormant uh, gods, so that's a buff to them. Because, uh, hey, they have to. Um, there's also less magic weapons, so that may be beneficial to them. Uh, there's just nothing that is enough to bring them up to from the C tier. I honestly like Ubar's scale troops. Their camel archers are like, mwah. I, I, I actually love those. Those are so beautiful. Um, the thing is, is and, and they have now have fire keep distance and stuff. It's just not the main aspect the nation people lean into so maybe like people are going to start running scales ubar and we'll run into a tier or you know or b tier or something else like that uh just think they're probably still c um next we have ohm and ohm was d tier and now they're c um uh, the long awaited buffs have finally come <laughs> they have amazing scale troops stealthy and dual wielding however earth magic is a bit nerfed and their MR still sucks. So hopefully our boys' time is going to finally come. I love Ulm. You know, Ulm's First Nation. You know, uh, like a lot of people, Ulm was my First Nation really getting into, like, multiplayer and stuff like that. Absolutely adore them. They're just very eclectic. I don't think that that's going to change. Maybe if the attack buffing spells are, like, F1 and you can, like, point buff it or stuff like that. Uh, it's just... It's just not going to happen, though, for, for Ulm. Um, actually, I guess the one way it would happen is if everyone's swimming in so much gold that foreign recruit mages and units becomes really important just for, like, snowballing. But I really don't think so. Next, we have Ur. So, I really like Ur. I really do. They have so many cool tools, including their anti-demon sacreds and Mushushu, not to mention, like, their A3 summable um you know sacred um sadly their expensive troops ha have low survivability and there's also a lot of nurse the water nature cross path which was their one saving grace kind of so i just don't see their future brightening at all like maybe maybe you could plan around like mushushu or you know hard thugging with their um with their mages like, you know, you do have you do have decent sacred A2 mages. You know, you can cloud trapeze around and stuff. Uh, I just I just really don't see the best path forward for them. So that is why they remain in the C tier. Vanheim. Uh, Vanheim was A tier, still A tier. They hurt from rainbows being worse and hurt from thugs losing cloud, uh, cloud trapeze. And lastly, they hurt from like uh, elf cav being worse. But they still have the amazing Van Heers. 
indecent, sacred, glamoured scales. Uh, they're still probably going to roll people with, like, blood bond and, you know, maybe fire and shock resistance. I, I you know, I don't know what all the earth buffs are going to be, but I'm sure that they can still find a way uh, through the vans. Um, so that is why they remain in the A tier, why other elves have dropped. Um, then we have Zabalba. So Zabalba was B. I debated between putting them in B and A tier, but I ended up leaving them B. They really, really might actually be A tier. It's really hard to tell. Um, because Zabalba is actually going to start in the cave layer with Agartha. So, like, that should be really good for them because Zabalba is a little bit weak early. But we really don't know how impactful that is going to be. They have some weak scales troops and they have national summons that are unbuffed. But, you know, they're not nerfed too. And so, higher pop, more blood slaves. So, it's probably going to be good. Um, yeah, so. I mean, they're going to have the realm all to their own. So, like, I feel like they might be A, but just going to go ahead and leave them B now. Expansion is harder. Their troops didn't get better. Um, you know, maybe they can do something with their sacred scorpions. Who knows? B tier it is. With trending, maybe up. Um, and then last but not least, we have Yomi. Uh, Yomi, with everyone else getting more gold... The differential keeps gl growing with Yomi because uh, Yomi gets less. Uh, oh, sorry. They were C tier and they're still C tier. Um, uh, with the more expensive infrastructure, you know, that's going to be also harder for Yomi. In addition, hell buses are getting more expensive. Uh, all of that said, Yomi still has recruitable super combatants. And the increase to 600 for everyone, uh, gold turn one guarantees that they can recruit a die oni turn one and they actually also have all right scales troops so they managed to hold on to c tier and that's one th thing i forgot to mention for niflheim is you can run say uh you can run you know super combatant expansion you can run super combatant expansion and like this might actually be better in the fact that like if you could super combatant expand before you can actually super combat and expand a little bit better now, and most people's expansions are going to be a little bit harder because um, expansions in general are a little bit harder. So like, maybe that's that's a buff to both these. Like, not enough to bump them up a tier, um, but you know, like that is how it is. And you know, what? just for just for fun, I'll I'll go ahead and yeah, I'll go ahead and sort the tiers. Um, though this is not, uh, <laughs> do not quote me on this. Uh, shoot uh so hmm, man i should have thought i did not prepare to do this beforehand um micklin micklin ormer has great mages fire's getting better sorrow uh, you know if the if the horses are tattooed sorrow's uh, sorrow's up here but i don't think the horses are tattooed i mean i'll actually will put i'll do it like this uh femoria doesn't have anything like they have their super combatants they have sailing they have everything else cool that they already had they you know they have their capital um elf scales elf you know they have a lot of cool stuff um they're gonna be getting less giants but like that's kind of fine agartha calum the mist form stuff is gonna actually be pretty good for them there's less magic weapons like their scales troops are decent you know casting aoa mist form on them probably pretty pretty good Lanka, probably better than that. Pan. I'll put Therados down towards the bottom. Ah, man. Actually, Matrox at the bottom of this tier. Um, Arco, do I feel good about that? I think I feel pretty good about this. I think I feel pretty good about this. Um, Helheim. TNN. Helheim. McCone's definitely towards the bottom of this tier. Same, um... The thing is, is, I just don't know for Zabalba. Nephilim, Oceana, Macone. Yeah, I think Oceana is kind of a called shot. Because, like, I don't know what defensive build you're actually going to go. Um, and, like, Macone, I've seen so many people pronounce these different ways. But I think hmm, Macone, Macone, Macone. I like Macone a lot. They're probably not better than Oceana. Because, like, who's actually using... Hmm, now, Oceana is more of a cold shot. Okay, we'll, we'll go like this. 
Uh, C tier. I actually think Bertez is going to be pretty, pretty good. Arverni. Uh, they're not that much better than they were. Russ towards the bottom. Ur towards the bottom. Ulm towards the bottom. Ubar. Yeah, I feel, I feel a little bit weak about Satis. Lantis towards the bottom. Yomi. TNN. TNG. Riley. Yomi. I feel like Yomi's actually better than it already. Satis. Bertos. Yeah, so like, Bertos is a rush, rush target a lot of the time. Like, they're a blood nation who has sacred, uh, you know, sacred summonable blood. Um, and so, like, I feel like a lot of time people over, over, like, index into that or, like, over index into scales. I just, I feel like now their medium cavalry is going to help stop rushes. And, you know, I, I just, you know, the thing about that cavalry is, like, cavalry can remount, but it actually makes them better for defense than offense. Um, you know? Because, hey, you're closer to your cap, so your logistics chain is, is shorter and stuff like that. Um, so, uh, Ubar, yeah, you know, uh, Yomi. I, I feel, I feel Russ or Atlantis. Atlantis, Atlantis is probably better than Russ. Uh, yeah, I feel pretty good about that. And Clisa Pelagula. Okay, I feel great about that. Okay, uh... Yeah, uh, please, <laughs> please let me know where I got it wrong in the comments below. Uh, I'm very interested to see how uh, things actually turn out. I'll, I'll release another one, you know, a couple months after uh, <laughs> Domain 6 gets released. And, you know, the majority of things will probably be wrong. But, you know, hey, this is this is for fun. Um, feel free to ask any questions uh, or anything else. Uh, and, yeah, uh, best luck to all you guys in your, your starting games. Um, I guess I'll do a little bit of ad advertisement. Is uh, they're planning on doing a boss mod 30 days after the start uh, boss mod game, so it's like 70 players after the start of Dominion's five. Sorry, Dominion six. Oh man, uh, I'm gonna be doing that for a while. Uh, you guys should definitely participate in that. Um, it's on, it's on Nexus, I think. Anyway, it's, it's gonna be really hype, really really hype. Um, all right, yeah. Um, Thank all you guys for, for listening. Um, and make sure to drop a like, comment, and subscribe. Let me know where I went wrong. And uh, yeah, stay safe, everyone. Peace.